Hi, I'm Lizelle Crowley and I'm here at Cool Tools to show you how to create what I call an embrace setting for fused glass or fireable stones in metal clay. And these are the tools we'll be using today. You need some thickness frames, texture tiles of your choice. I like to use decorative punches. You can get any shape or size. I prefer the stars. These are an example of the types of stones. These are some fused glass cabochons, and this is some labradorite, and this is some moonstone. And you can refer to the Cool Tools uh, firing guides as to what is suitable for this project. A choice of template, obviously some metal clay. We're using art clay silver today. I prefer this for this project because it shrinks less, and that lower shrinkage is helpful in this design. A rolling pin my favorite metal clay tool of all time, the Ultimate Clay Pick, and some cool slip to lubricate our textures. First, I'm going to show you how to select a template to work with these designs. You start by selecting the stone that you want to work with. In this case, it's a fused glass cabochon. And what I want to do is select a shape that will work with this that is large enough to accommodate shrinkage. So something like this is perfect for this particular stone. But if I wanted to use this shape, which is also a beautiful shape, it's a little too narrow because when I account for shrinkage and the depth of the stone, it just won't be wide enough to accommodate the stone. All of these are examples of excellent shapes for this type of a design. And there are many others that Cool Tool sells that would really work for this design. Now I'm going to show you how to select a texture for your design. This is what I would call a deep relief texture, and this is what I would call a low relief texture. I tend to texture both sides of these pieces so the piece looks good from the back as well as the front. I would use a lower relief texture on the back of the piece and a deeper relief texture on the front of the piece. And Cool Tools has an amazing selection of textures to choose from. The other thing that I like to do is take the template I've selected and audition the texture I'm going to use by placing the template over the texture and seeing how it looks in different sections. And that helps give me an idea of how my finished piece is going to look. Now I'm going to show you how to create the back of the piece by texturing and cutting out your shape. I'm going to start with a good sized piece of art clay silver and you want to make sure you have enough clay to be able to get the full size of the piece that you're creating. And I'm going to use the thickness frame that is four cards thick and I'm just going to roll a smooth sheet, four cards thick, and again, you always want to rotate the clay so that you stretch it in all directions. Once I've achieved that thickness, I'm going to switch to a two cards thick frame and work with that lower relief texture slat, uh, tile that I showed you earlier. And I'm going to lay my clay on here. And this has been pre-lubricated. As I tell my students, it's always better to pre-lubricate your textures before you open your clay. I've been lubricated it using the cool slip. And whenever I roll a texture, I roll once with firm, even pressure. And that should release nicely from the texture tile because I used the cool slip. And now this is going to be the back of the piece. So I want to lay it on a tough card, which is an excellent way to create your pieces because as you create them, you can pick them up and set them aside without having to disturb them. So I'm going to lay it down upside down. Take my template. And you want to anchor the clay and the template as you cut and you use the ultimate clay pick which is one of the best needle tools in the universe and you want to hold it perpendicular and cut your shape out and I like to go around twice always take your excess clay and put it away so that it doesn't dry out in this wonderful clay hydrator that Cool Tools sells now this is the back of my piece 
and this is the stone that I'm going to um, put in my piece. So I want to decide where my stone is going to go and I'm going to cut a hole out from behind where the stone is going to go. The punch I'm going to use needs to be smaller than my stone but big enough to um, cut a substantial hole out from behind it. And this is to allow for pressure release as the clay is shrinking around the stone when it's firing. So I'm just going to, I like a star as I've said, but you can use whatever shape you want as long as it's not bigger than the piece of, than the stone that you're using. Again, I'm going to pull that little bit of clay out, put it in my hydrator, and that's how to create the back of the piece. Next, I'll show you how to create the top part. Now I'm going to show you how to make the top part of your design using a texture that is either the same or different from the texture you used on the back. I'm going to start with some metal clay and I'm going to roll it out four cards thick using the thickness frame. You always want to have plenty of clay because you can always cut away, but you want to make sure you have enough to get a good crisp image for the top of your piece. And I'm going to roll and rotate, stretching the clay in all directions until I have it four cards thick. Now I'm going to lay my texture down, texture side up, and this has been pre-lubricated with Cool Slip. I'm going to lay my clay on top of that and my, text, my thickness frame that is two cards thick on top of that. And roll with one firm even swipe to get a nice evenly impressed piece of clay. Isn't that a lovely design? Next I'm going to cut out the same shape that I used for the back of my piece. And again I'm going to anchor the clay and you can move the template around to just determine where on the texture you'd like to cut. I actually think I want to cut right here, centering this motif. So you take your clay pick, holding it perpendicular, and cut your shape out. You always want to take your excess clay and place it back in the hydrator to keep it from drying out. Next, I'm going to cut down the middle of this, of this design because I'm going to embrace my glass and sandwich it between the top and the bottom plates. And I like to follow the line of my texture to give it a very organic and natural look. That's why I tend to like a very flowy texture for these designs. It's always better to cut away less than you need rather than more than you need because you can always cut away a little more should you need to, but it, you can't add if you cut too much away at first. Now I'm going to take my original piece with my glass on top of it and I'm going to audition these two side pieces and make sure I like the way they look. So I'm going to just lightly drape them over the glass now I don't want to press down around the glass, I just want the clay to contact around the outer edge. And this is how the clay is embracing the glass, hence the name, the embrace setting. And I really like the look of this, so I'm going to go ahead and actually join the top pieces to the base. So to join the top pieces to the base, I'm going to take just some water, and I'm going to very um, generously wet the base piece. And it, I'm, I'm just wetting the whole thing. You could just concentrate around the edge, but I'd rather have more than I need. Because it's going to be on the inside of the piece, it's not going to make anything look messy. This is also going to rehydrate the clay a bit if it's been sitting out for a while. And the reason I remove my glass to do this is because I don't really want to get all this water on the glass piece. I'm going to lay my glass piece down again. And now when I go to drape these side pieces, I'm just going to make sure that I make some good contact around that outer edge. And again, be very careful not to press it close around the glass because you don't want it to tighten up around the glass when it's firing. 
You want it to stay fairly loose. Okay. Once I have those together, I also like to run a little water around the outside edge. And next, this is where I feel that the design will really come together. I will take the smaller size of the same shape and trim the whole piece out. And this will give me a very nice tight connection around all the edge and just tighten up the design. But you want to anchor it really well. And again, you use the ultimate clay pick because it's nice and fine tipped. So you can do this cutting without disturbing your piece. Again, cut away the excess. this away and this is the base piece now this piece it, it came up a little on the edge here but that's not a problem I can move that back over and just press it down slightly this piece will be dried and sanded and then I will attach a bale and then it will be done now I'm going to show you how to attach a bale I've already sanded and refined this piece and I have sand it around the edge. I like to run my finger along it and make sure it's smooth and also I like it to look seamless. And you want to make sure there's no gaps anywhere around so you know that the top piece and the bottom piece are um, joined really well. And you can make any kind of bale you'd like to make for this. The kind of bale I like to make, I make with a coil of clay. So I'm going to take a little bit of clay and you don't need a lot of clay when you're working with coils. In fact, the mistake a lot of people make when they roll coils is they take too much clay and it becomes too much clay to handle. So I'm going to start rolling my coil with my finger and then I'm going to use the Cool Tools coil roller, which I really love because it's nice and thick and it's nice and long. And you just go back and forth and as you roll, the clay will elongate and thin out and make you a nice long coil of clay. And I like to taper the ends, and the way to taper the ends is just press a little harder on the end. And I naturally tend to press on this side, so I just flip my coil around and taper both sides. If that happens, no worries, just get it out of the way. So here's my finished coil. The first thing I want to do with this is wet it. And the reason for that is any time you want to bend your clay, you want the surface to be nice and moist, otherwise you'll get a lot of surface cracks. So by wetting it, you're going to keep that cracking from happening. Now I'm going to bring my piece over. And again, I'm working on one of these tough cards so that once the coil is attached, I can place it in my dryer um, without disturbing the piece. So the way I do this coil is I loop it around the way I do this bale is I loop it around, try to get it centered. Okay. There we go. And now I'll come in with my water and I'll brush along where the clay is going to attach to the piece. See how I'm really flooding that with water? And then I can also wet the ends. And I can bring them down along the top, or I could curl, curl them up if I want, and make them decorative. I can, as long as I keep wetting the coils, I can sort of play with this and make a decorative ending for the coil. Now, this is where the cord will go through, and I have basically a finished piece. This will go in the dehydrator, and after it's dried, I'll reinforce where I joined the coil to the piece, 
from the um, from the front and the back with some more water and then I'll do a final sanding and then it will be fired. Here's the finished piece. The embrace setting in metal clay with a fireable stone. You can see the front and the back. You can see the visual interest from the texture and the cutout on the back. You just run a chain through the bale and you're ready to go. Visit our Learning Center at www.cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for the email list to be the first to hear about new videos, products, contests, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.